Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. So today's video is gonna be a little bit different because I had gone doll hunting and originally I was gonna make it like a full throttle doll hunting video. And then I was so excited that I forgot to film like anything really good. <laughs> I'll show you a couple clips here and there of the store that I went to. It was called Toy Department. It was just like a little um, like reseller of old collectible toys. They had a doll section, but they had a lot of action figures like Funko Pops, model cars, all kinds of crazy stuff. It was. It was really, really interesting. But okay, quick voiceover um, from the footage that I did get. That's the outside of the store. And then these are the doll shelves. And I got as far as like recording the shelves and then immediately lost myself because I was so excited. These were literally like three deep on the shelf. So there's triple the amount that you see on the screen here. It was just so many dolls to look through. They had kind of all the Monster High dolls mostly in one section here amazing stuff. I pulled out some to show you. Um, tons and tons and tons of different kinds of Barbie. Like, I have never even seen this many Barbies on a current toy shelf, like in a current store. Uh, we had a Monster High Ghoulia. Just so many dolls to look through. There was that girl Barbie, which for some reason I thought was very interesting. <laughs> Great Scary Reef Monster High. Uh, this Cerise Hood I almost got, but I got other stuff instead. She was a little wonky in the box, but, you know, she's fine. Descendants, uh, a lot of Liv dolls, shockingly. And then the last one coming up here is some NSYNC dolls. And so I figured I would just do a little doll haul today because all of the dolls that I bought actually came from, like, the same line. So that is the Barbie Dolls of the World. This was so interesting to me because I, like, didn't even know this was a thing. Like, I didn't know this was a line that Barbie had done. And specifically, they're from the Princess Collection from the Dolls of the World, which was made in, like, the early 2000s. I want to say, like, somewhere between 2000 and, like, 2004 was when it spanned. And they had a ton of different dolls. And it just, like, was so interesting to me because I feel like it's so different than what we see from Barbie now. And they're so beautiful. So, like, let's just, let's just get started. I have three dolls. So the first one is this. This is... Barbie, the Princess of England from the Dolls of the World collection. And like, oh my God, <laughs> she's so pretty. Like she's so beautiful. I saw this and was just like, I had to bring her home. Like I didn't have an option. This doll, sorry, I don't wanna like have the light in the way. I don't know which way has less glare, but she's so beautiful. And then on the back of the box, it is a little beat up. Like she's she's a little beat up. You could see on the front, if you saw the tag, I paid $20 for her, um, but there's like a lot of information, not a lot, I shouldn't say that, but there's some information about England from the time period that she's like meant to be in. So it talks about um, Shakespeare and the theater and different like pastimes, like board games and instruments. And it's just so fascinating. Like I love that there's a little bit of educational value on the back of the box. I'll try and see if I can insert it in such a way that you can pause to read it. Cause it is like, that's a lot of words, you know? <laughs> I don't wanna like take all the time to read it out loud cause that's a lot. Um, but yeah, I just, I think that's really cute and very interesting. So that was Barbie Princess of England. And then we have the Princess of the Portuguese Empire, which again, like just look at this fabric. I feel like this is so stunning. Like she's just so beautiful. She was a little more expensive, 25, but like I was gonna buy her. I, I literally looked at every single doll that they had and it was so hard to not walk away with just armfuls of dolls because there were so many cool ones. But like I had to limit myself to these three, you know, like I, I'm on a budget, but yeah, Portuguese empire princess. And also information on the back here. Which again, it's just so fun. This is set during uh, the Age of Discovery. So that's like when she's meant to be placed in historically. Talks a little bit about jousting and like just some traditions. And I think that's so cool. Again, like I think it's really awesome that we have a little bit of like learning aspect with these dolls. And then the last one that I got was the Princess of Ireland, which like these were just the three that they had. I think they also had Princess of the Vikings, but I, I could not afford to buy more dolls. Like I had to stop. But yeah, so Princess of Ireland, again, like so pretty, her hair, her crown. I'm just, I'm so excited. I cannot believe that I didn't know that these were a thing. Like I, hello, what? <laughs> now I'm so excited because I want to get more of them. And it's just, 
I'm just so excited. The information on the back here, again, really, really cool. This one talks about Celtic, um, heritage is the wrong word, but Celtic like culture and like some of their belief systems, which is, I just think it's so fascinating. And like, this is such a cool line. So for those of you who have watched my videos before, um, you will know that I am pretty much strictly an out of box collector. And so I'm sorry, but that does mean that these dolls are gonna be unboxed. <laughs> I know that that might hurt some of you guys. The boxes are really not in great condition. Like this one has a hole in the plastic. So I feel less terrible about doing it because it's not like they're pristine, you know? Um, but that's just how I like my dolls. So I'm sorry if it kind of hurts you to see dolls that are like older <laughs> be taken out of box, but I am gonna do that. I am gonna try to salvage like the back of the box just because even like this one has some hairs and like crinkles in it already, but I am gonna like cut that out and try to salvage it just because I think if that's cool display wise, I would like to be able to display them with their information. But yeah, so they're they're gonna come out of box. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that off camera real quick and then we will switch and be able to look at them in detail. And like, I'm just so excited to see all the, the details on these outfits because they already look so cool in box, but I, I'm just so thrilled to be able to see what they look like out. So I will see you guys in a second with that. Okay, I wanna say I'm sorry in advance if this ends up being like a very long video, but I'm so stupidly excited about these dolls. They're so beautiful. Oh my God. Okay. Try not to scream, Oliver. Get it together. <laughs> First, uh, we're going to be looking at Princess of England. I have her off her stand so we can talk about her stand for a second because this is like very interesting to me. We have a white base and then it's one of those that like goes up between their legs and she just sits on it. However, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, kind of. There's also little grooves on either side for her hips and because of the almost tacky plastic of Barbie legs, it actually like sticks to her a little bit. So they actually work really well. Like you can see the two in the back are standing up and like it works just fine, which I think is very, very interesting because normally those kinds of stands, the saddle stands are a pain in the butt. So that was kind of cool to see, but okay. Princess of England. Oh my God. Oh my God. Ah! She's so pretty. I don't know what to say. This crown, amazing. I will say, I'm sure this is just an age thing. The like face and the neck are definitely two different colors. They're two different plastics. So I'm just assuming that they've aged differently. Like this doll is literally 20 years old. So that's kind of to be expected. But her face is so beautiful. Like obviously this isn't like walking into the store and getting a Rainbow High doll or an LOL doll in the boxes where you can see them. Like I just found this secondhand randomly. I didn't get to pick the face, but she's so pretty. And then we've got like embroidery and like so much detail with her dress here. These sleeves, okay, to die for, like literally to die for. I love this. I love like the shape of it is so pretty. Her arms don't bend at the elbow. So she is stuck in like this bent arm position. Cause she's supposed to be like, Ooh, you know, dainty, dainty lady arms, like kind of folded in front of her. Um, but it is kind of funny to me cause I can just like make her T pose almost. <laughs> Barbie Princess of England here, here to threaten you. <laughs> but I, I just think it's so pretty and the gold on the sleeve does go like all the way up. This is just so much fabric. We've got the rope here. Her skirt is like that kind of fabric, you know, like home, almost windbreaker fabric. But the print is so beautiful with some metallics thrown in there. She definitely could use like a little bit of steam on the bottom. It's kind of wrinkled from how it was displayed in the box. I just like, I'm baffled. I just, she's so pretty. I don't know what else to say. She's just beautiful. I don't, sorry, I have to look at this really quick because I actually don't know. Okay, that's very interesting. Looking at the back, I feel like she's sewn into this dress. Like there's not really snaps or anything to get her out. So that's interesting, but like she is a collector's edition. I'm sure you're just supposed to keep her there. And then her shoes were actually packaged not on her feet, which is fascinating, but she's got like these little pink sort of booties. Like you don't see it much, but overall, like the quality of her, I'm trying to get all of her in frame. She's very tall. She's just so beautiful. I'm 
I'm like literally stunned by these dolls. They're so, so stupidly pretty. Also, for those of you who haven't seen any of my videos before, I have to face them away so that when I'm talking about a specific doll, it doesn't like focus on the wrong thing. So sorry, I know that's like irritating and weird. Then the Princess of England also came with a certificate of authenticity, which is cool. Editing note, I did forget to show the other two, but the other two dolls did also come with certificates of authenticity. Uh, the Princess of Ireland actually came with two, so she's doubly authenticated, I guess. And she also came with this cardboard passport. So I don't really know what this is supposed to be. Like you have room to fill it out. And like, there's a couple of extra pages. I'm not sure what the gimmick with this was meant to be. Like if you could get stickers or something. Um, the website on here, barbietravel.com, when you type it in, just redirects to Shop Mattel. So I'm not really sure, because it says that you were supposed to visit exotic lands and far off times, which I would have liked to have been able to do, but fine. You know, I get it. Times change. I'm not happy, but I understand. <laughs> Now, taking a look at the Princess of Portugal. We're just gonna start on the back, okay? I know her hair is a disaster here. It's very, very old. It was in the box the whole time. Like, she's looking a little rough. She needs a little help. But that's not her fault, you know? Like, <laughs> that's not on her. She does have a super cool, like, netted accessory. I don't know what you would call this. If you do know, please correct me in the comments because I'm just, like, uneducated. But I think it looks really, really beautiful. Her face also, again, just stunning. So pretty, she's got little earrings. She has one perfect ringlet, okay? I pull it to the side here so you can kind of see. One perfect ringlet. I have no idea how I would get curls that small, but I would love for her whole head to look like that. Like, oh my God. But the dress, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm gonna say that a lot this video, I'm sorry. But like the netting detail, all of the different fabrics, this, this like, is this a brocade? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel like that's the right word, but I could be wrong. The puff sleeves. There's just so much detail. Oh my God. And then the velvet skirt. There was a uh, 20 year old tissue paper holding this in the box. So I thought it was gonna lose a lot of its volume, but it, it didn't. Like it still looks so, so beautiful. And then her from the back, this is why I was surprised with the um, England Barbie, because she's got snaps holding her dress on. So you could take her out of it. Look at the back. Not that I'm going to, like she's gonna stay in this, but that's just very interesting to me that like the England Barbie was kind of sewn in and she's not. And then for her, she has like a little underskirt as well. So two layers and then just simple kind of purple slippers you can't see now, but when they weren't on her feet, they were a little bit like translucent. And I don't know if they're meant to be this color because it does slightly feel like it doesn't fit with the rest of her outfit. But again, 20 years old, time could have changed that. So like, I have to give her a pass. Little baby heel there. It is funny to me that like the feet are molded to have proper heels, like typical Barbie, but she definitely doesn't. So she's just kind of like walking on her very tiptoe. But again, you don't see it. Like, she's cute. She's fine. I'm just so ecstatic that I found these dolls. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and then last of all is the Princess of Ireland. Gotta get her all settled. Face again. Like, I feel like these Barbie faces were killing it. I don't know what is happening in the modern world, but like, I feel like Barbie faces now don't always look like this. I feel like there's a lot more misprints. But for me to get three random dolls at a secondhand store and all of them to look this pretty. Take notes, Mattel. You did this before, like you can do it again. <laughs> she does have like this one little twist in her hair. I had to put a rubber band on here because the original one had disintegrated with time, but that's to be expected. She is very, very frizzy at the ends. You saw in the background, very frizzy in the back. So again, she could use some assistance, but like the front piece is very nice. So I feel like once she's taken care of, she's gonna look really pretty. Again, I love her crown. I like that they all have kind of different headpieces that I don't know if they're accurate, you know, to the times and places that these are supposed to be in. I'm assuming that they are, um, but I'd love that they, it's not just like a typical Barbie tiara, like that they really went for something different with the full like crown. I love it. She's got this awesome velvet cape. 
and the clasp doesn't work, but it is like sewn on. I don't know. I just, I think that's so pretty. Her dress is probably, she just slid off her stand. <laughs> her dress is probably the dress that I'm like least thrilled about just because I don't really like the texture of this, but the appearance is super beautiful. All of the detailing on this front panel is so pretty. She's got the belt. Like she just looks so good. And again, she does also have a snap back here that you can take her out with. Only one, so she's got kind of like a little hole there. But she's just so beautiful. And then her shoes as well, just like the Portuguese princess are just little slippers. So yeah, I mean, the shoes are kind of simple for all of them, but the dresses really are stunning. The headpieces are beautiful. Like, I'm just gonna turn these dolls all around now, now that I'm not worried about the focus. So you can really get a feel for how stunning they are. And I just, I'm in awe. I'm genuinely in awe. I'm so excited to have found these. I absolutely want to try to get more from this line because I didn't know it existed and they're so amazing. And I just really think that it says a lot that this is something that Barbie could produce. Like this is something that they have done. I've ranted about this before. Like we all know that the quality of Barbie has declined, but I just think it's kind of sad to see dolls like this. I guess bittersweet is a better word because I'm happy to have found them. You know, like they still exist. You can still get them secondhand, but it's sad to see that this was like a whole line that Barbie did that was beautiful and quality. And like, it's just so unique too, with the educational aspect of it, with the information about these different cultures and like trying to represent different cultures. I think that's a beautiful concept. And I did a review recently of the Barbie Extra Minis. So like for comparison, I also like this doll. I said that in the review. I was happy to have her. I'm still happy to have her. She's in the collection and I love her. But it's so fascinating to see that this is like, to me, some of the best that Barbie has to offer right now. And like, this was her history. And we all know that Mattel is making money off of the new Barbies, even Barbies that are like way less quality than this. So it doesn't matter. Like they're not gonna change anything, but I would love to see Mattel go back to at least sometimes producing something like this because I just, I can't believe how stunning these dolls are. So yeah, that's like the long, um, very <laughs> long winded video about these dolls. Sorry if that was a lot for you guys, if it was like not what you wanted to digest, but I was just very excited and I had to talk about them. So I do hope that you enjoyed the video. Please let me know your thoughts down below. Um, I'm dying to discuss these with you because I literally could stare at them all day. I could talk about them all day. I don't know how to describe how ecstatic I am, but yeah, so that's the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be. And I will catch you next week in the next one. Bye guys.